Are they gonna shoot missiles or something? <laughs> thing going y'all want to talk about the con first or you talk about the movie first we'll try to get you which one i don't know how much we're going to be able to talk about the movie because most of it is like this guy fought this guy well it's so it's so basic that's the reason why i'm thinking 30 minutes for each (laughs) yeah (laughs) like split it up which one you want to do first the con or the movie you can do the movie first, knock it out if you want. If you want, Lucas. Okay, sounds <laughs> sounds good to me. I'm okay with it. Oh, I'm gosh. like, I'm not. I'm easy. I'm just not cheap. That's. I don't know. I think I think I'd prefer to talk about the con first. I think. Okay. That would be all, right, all right. All right. All right. Yeah. First, we can do the con first. Okay. Okay. I, I'll, Your I'll hair looks is... great today, Sierra. Oh, I thought you were going to talk about my hair. <laughs> well, you too. Your hair looks your your hair looks great every day, Sean. Thank, Thank you. It's so. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, all I got to say is nothing but positive of the con. I really I do. I mean, it's it's right where I like it. Like, I, I don't like a lot of people and I don't like, you know what I'm saying? Like, my biggest thing with anime St. Louis has always been getting run over. Like, i not too crazy about the venues and you're like, you're, you can't even stand still for like a minute most of the time. And you're like, push, you got to move, you got to move, you got to move, you got to keep on moving. This was not like that. And it was like, if we want to do whatever we want to do, it was like, you know, I said, let's just go to the fountain, right? And so we just go down the fountain. And it's like, nobody's there. And you're like, just taking advantage of it. And then like. That was really nice. Yeah, I've never and, seen the fountain that empty for shoots before. Right. And then so that was definitely a plus. Uh, the video from the photography which is something you know i'm learning to do as well we can do for future cons uh i don't of course don't go to panels so i don't have really a say in it. i did notice that the panels were pushed an hour ahead is that my understanding i have no idea um the only thing that i went to and the only thing i was part of was the uh okashi fashion show on saturday did you go to a panel sierra no i didn't go to any panels um the most of the ones that i went to like they said they would start then, but they would like start it 30 minutes or like an hour beforehand. And I was like, oh, right. is that how we do it today? Yeah. Did that kind of mess things up for you? It kind of did. Cause I was like, cause when I, uh, cause when you try to go in, they were already filled. So I'm like, oh, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> so do you think they just opened the rooms early and let people in so that attendance was like accounted for before they started or did they actually start early well i that's probably most for some of them but like most of them um when i went up there they were already like the doors was already closed like they were already talking like doing their thing uh most were like that and then others were just like yeah it was just a tennis and it was already filled and I was like, dang, okay. <laughs> wow, that's crazy. I didn't try to go to anything this year. I was too busy scrambling around. I was nervous about getting into what cosplay at what time. And I feel like I do do this to myself at every con is I just like, I really stress out about things until it's already over. And then I'm like, wow, yeah, I had a great time at the con. And I'm upset I was stressing the whole time though. You get you really know? stressed out a lot. And I it's, was, I'm so sorry. It's just one time, but it's like, but this one time, you just one time you were past, but I've seen that before. Like where you, especially when right before a show, you would yeah. get in like panic and attack, and it's. I like, was nervous about the Lolita thing because it was so far out of like I don't want to say out of my comfort zone, but it was so new for me because I really don't do that kind of thing. I don't do fluffy dresses or really like female attire at all anyway. So it was just it was really fun though. I had a lot of. Fun. I, I'll be honest with you, right before I do a show is, and I know this is totally gross, I, I throw up sometimes, and it helps oh out gosh. a lot. D- do you do the same things here? Yeah, I got, I got stage fright anxiety, so it just comes up naturally. I'm like, oh. Yeah, I do. Well, it's like, I, I showed up Friday night, and it's like Sierra goes down the hallway, and it, she looks like a, from somebody from the set of the Beverly Hills Wives with a, looks like a margarita in her hand, and <laughs> schoolgirl. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's one of those fruit cocktail things you had, but it looked like a margarita. I was like sitting there going, it's like <laughs> Elsa here. I was like <laughs> I was thinking, are we on the set of Beverly Hills Wives? And then <laughs> like, Sierra's in there. Well, I mean it's like I said, um it was it's tough because like said you know being locked up for a year and i guess mm -hmm. i i wonder if this is what you guys are experiencing today. i was so out of shape uh i just it was so hard to adjust it was uh really rough for me and i don't know how you guys dealt with it what was yours like i mean, I, I barely fit into any of my cosplays so i had very <laughs> slim pickings for what i could bring First of all, so I think that's something that like really like attributed to my anxiety for the con, but I don't know. I guess that was like my biggest setback. Yeah, and I had just gotten off a trip and I did really well on my last trip. And this trip, I put, I packed the wrong chargers. I packed the wrong clothes. I had, I packed everything wrong. I was like, like say Sierra and we had to go to Walmart to pick up a, you know charger for the camera or we can't do video the next day and which is like everything one thing i learned about saint charles if i go back i'll probably enjoy it more because i know where everything's at now because like everything's right there there's like you're just right down the road from walmart you're right down the road from uh downtown uh and i said if we did this correctly and it was better timing like i'd probably fit in a movie for us to go watch and review and that kind of thing because everything's right there and you know didn't do that because like you know i didn't know what to expect i really did and i was just like let's just run with it you know just just go out there and we did really well uh sierra got a lot of content for video we got a lot of photos uh for you guys and probably tuesday is when i'll have all the lolita stuff up and i'll email your person i've got to get the names correct for all that which is something we got to do to get uh you know the name of the fashion and all that kind of stuff so we can credit everything like that and then we got you know as well but we'll see how that goes but like i said to me it's it's been really a good positive 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 feedback from all this it was well worth what we did even though it didn't seem like a lot it it have impacted more after we got back than it did while we were there awesome yeah and that's was, what we were looking for right yeah exactly what about you Sierra? was was what's what the most fun that you had out there i mean was this like a year before since you've been out to a con it was actually two years because the last mm. time i went to a con was actually march in 29 uh 20 no it was my last one was actually December of 2018 because I wasn't able to go to the Riverview Inn one in, in 2019. Yeah. Well, I mean, there was one at Clarksville and I canceled it even though there wasn't any cancellation because I wanted to go to one in Evansville because like Lucas and I, we already had hotel rooms going to Evansville. And I was already on my way to Kentucky, so that one I couldn't go to that one. <laughs> oh, well, I, I this is before <laughs> you and I made a deal. And oh. <laughs> but like Lucas and I were going to Evansville, that was our thing. And I was talking to people at work, I was like, I've got to get ready to go on the trip, right? And then, of course, uh, Miss Haley, and I talk about Miss Haley a lot, and uh, Lucas knows that. And she says, uh, I don't think you're going to go to Evansville. I've said, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> this is like Indiana, you know, they don't give a care. And sure enough, uh, you know, I, there was a big old thing and I, it was tough because I had to go. I think Lucas's parents have already said that you weren't going no matter what. So and, this was my first con in a while. And yeah. I remember March of 20, I guess it was 2020 when everything started shutting yeah. down. We had tickets and we're all packed up. I had all my cosplays packed up and we were leaving that morning for NakaCon. Right. And literally people were checking into the hotels and everything on that day whenever they were like, hey, actually we're not having it today. Like don't check into your rooms. And people were already there. 
which was like cr the crazy thing is like uh, I think part of my group had already gone and checked into the rooms and they're like hey what are you going to be here and we were literally getting in the car getting all of our stuff into the car to go and there's this big announcement that was just like hey sorry we know you're here but it's not happening and we were like oh my goodness so yeah I couldn't do that one uh, and then I was looking forward to the one with you that we were going to do and that one mm -hmm. shut down and everything just closed and it was wild and yeah it, was it I was I I really was upset because it was like was that I was in prison, was in prison. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you were in prison like you don't understand at AIT they had these barracks but it was caged in I felt like I was in prison because <laughs> I had a uniform and everything I was like oh <laughs> y'all were getting ready for the zombie apocalypse I was like, like we were not allowed to leave our barracks like we had to be marched from chow to chow we were not allowed to like classes were canceled for a good old month and I was like we're really in prison aren't we because <laughs> the Wi-Fi was down, AC wasn't working. I'm like, oh. <laughs> that's insane. Oh my so goodness. you were over there whenever everything started shutting down? Well, I was I was stuck in AIT in since 2019. That's since terrifying. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> well, and then I was able to leave until like April 16th of 2020. <laughs> oh, wow. So I was just like, yeah, I'm actually in prison. But it was chill. I was getting paid in prison. <laughs> <laughs> get joking. That's pretty get, cool. They did get pay, paid in prison. I remember prisoners making 11 cents an hour for plumbing and things like that. They do. They do get paid in prison. But yeah, it's enough. Bump that up to 50 cents. Bump it up to 50 cents. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, well, I was like, I, I, I've been to a lot of the federal uh, penitentiaries because you got like um, Illinois just they need to just make Illinois into a giant prison because there's only Chicago and pretty much that's because you got <laughs> just between Illinois and like and, Collinsville area. It's just all and then there's Springfield, but everything right. else is just oh yeah, it's God. just like there's nothing there. It's like, you know, I mean, you've got Illinois University. Everybody stops in Champaign just to see the strippers and, you know, so they can pay their tuition. And then that's about it. And they Chicago. Well, I mean, it's like you guys don't realize how well you guys got in St. Louis with all the nice strip clubs. It's like y'all strip clubs are like known all the way from Los Angeles. I got really? people from L.A. Yeah. Like when they make their films, watch a film sometime and see when they go film in St. Louis. They'll have all the strip clubs they went to in St. Louis. Like, we want to thank all the straight clubs. Well, I mean, like, when I was younger, they used to, like, have the Playboy Club in St. Louis. I don't think it's open now, but you used to, like, like when you filmed out here and commercials and stuff, you just go, most of the bunnies, they'd go hire them and they did commercials locally. Nobody knew there was a bunny because you're, like, living in the country. What's a, what's a Playboy bunny? <laughs> wow, when you're older, we'll crazy. tell you. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways yeah it's like like i was sitting there minding my own little business while i was there and it's like yo you need a 25 dollar get on the lingerie bus for next month this is this month when the lingerie bus starts in st louis like, like, <laughs> girl, what 25 dollars well you already got a pole there so you're good to go you're, I, hope, I hope they're sanitizing everything though. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. Anyways, I don't, I don't, like I said, I don't visit strip clubs because like I said, if I can't, if I'm going to pay money, you know, like I said, I'm going to be eating the cupcakes. Don't be showing the cupcakes to me. I don't care about that crap. I can get, I can just look at cupcakes all day on YouTube. <laughs> if I'm paying money, I'm touching them cupcakes. <laughs> Screw that, man. All right, so uh, so nothing but positives. Uh, any stories you want to talk about? The best thing that happened? Like that? Uh, no, there got to be a better story than the movie we're going to talk about. I, I have I have a very 
a very compelling story about a tragic event that happened to us on Saturday night of the con. A tragic? So, oh no. Yes, it was it was it was a very it was a thrill it's a thriller story. So oh, no. buckle buckle up. This is All crazy. Right. But uh we're leaving a room party on Saturday night and we're like really hungry and we're like, oh, we're gonna God. order a pizza. So we do. We ordered the pizza. And then my contacts start drying out in my eyes and I just, I can't blink anymore or anything. So we're like, man, okay, I think we have time before the pizza gets here to go back to our hotel and change contacts, take out my contacts so my eyes are okay, get back and pick up the pizza. Well, in route to our hotel to take my contacts out, we lost my friend's phone. We Ooh. could no longer contact pizza delivery person i know it's pretty crazy so we're on our way back to the con hotel now to see if we can meet up with the pizza person and as soon as we pull up they get out with our pizzas and we're like those are for us so yeah it was the happy ending he ended up finding the phone it was like it was lost in my car actually as funny as that is but we were like, we spent the rest of Sunday, cause we didn't find it until like Tuesday. So we spent the rest of Sunday, like going back and forth from the hotel to the con and asking a bunch of different places if they had found a phone, which <laughs> they had not because it was in my car. But yay, double yay, cause we got pizza, first of all, and we also found the phone. <laughs> what about you, Sierra? Did you have any good stories there or? No, because I got sick on Saturday. You got sick on <laughs> Saturday? Well, I, I, my, my story was like getting to see, but you were all right in the morning time. You did okay because you filmed on Saturday morning. Yeah, it hit me like near like the middle, and then it was like okay, and then I was like okay, we're good, we're good, and then I was like no, we're not good, and it was like okay, we're good now, and then I was like. No. Yeah, and then, <laughs> and then I got in and he was like, no. Then <laughs> Sierra gets mad at me because I, I played. What's that noise? That's got to be outside. They're sawing. Uh, I don't hear nothing. Oh, that's on my side. Now and then Sierra gets mad at me because I'm, I'm like going all army medic on him. Did you drink plenty of water? <laughs> <laughs> okay, we got a run coming up. I'm going to be hydrated. <laughs> You sure you drank plenty of water? <laughs> like, I was just so mad. I was like, you never get sick when you travel, and this is the time you want to? Oh. Like, you weak bish. <laughs> I'm glad you still came out and took photos on Saturday night, though, because we looked really cute as Len and Miku, the little senbone. Well, the funny, the <laughs> funny so thing was, uh, yeah, did, did you see the new pictures here? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. no, um, <laughs> I forgot what I was going to say. It was funny. Um, besides uh, the Herman thing. But anyways. <laughs> oh, no, you dropped it. I, I had another really cool uh, story about Saturday, though. Okay. Well, so... It was during the fashion show backstage and we're all getting into like the big petticoats and the large dresses and everyone's helping like tie each other up and stuff. It was really fun and we all like exchanged like Instagram tags and talked about like our experience with like Alita and fashion shows and stuff and you know and the coolest part about being backstage though is I got to meet the performers who did the dance for the show. I know, and I've been following them on Instagram for what, like two years now or something like that. I watch all their YouTube videos, I like all their pictures, and I finally got to meet them. And uh, the one of the boys in the group remembered me from a previous convention, actually, which was really cool. And I asked for a picture, and I got a picture with them, and later had like a little conversation with uh, the girl twin which was cool. But I was on Sunday after the con, I had dropped off CJ and I went to go pick up Alex, our shrimp pimp friend, and we were having dinner. And while we were having dinner, I looked down at my phone and Juvenix, the performers, they actually followed me back on Instagram 
I know. Way to go, look it. I know. It was so cool. So, yeah, yeah. So I made some yeah. friends. I did. And you know, yeah. they actually they made their outfits from scratch. Oh, do they? For yeah. yeah, from scratch. They made their outfits from scratch. For what's what's the, what's the name of the outfits that you guys wore Saturday night? Us. Yeah. The send on Sakura outfits. Yeah, that's that's one I got of them. We did a shoot like two years ago. With oh yeah, that's right. And they haven't yeah. worn those in a very long time. But they no, mostly man. do Vocaloid stuff. I don't know why I'm holding this. Yeah, one but... looks like one reminds me and looks like Ash a lot. I think yeah. of Ash a lot, and that's what they one of them does. They're um, a group of twins, and then. Yeah one of their friends that they've had since like elementary school they're like one yeah. big happy family they had that little uh, the little well, ponytail yeah yeah that's novin he's the not twin oh, <laughs> and then the other two were the twins so cute. yeah they were all adorable i really enjoyed that the only thing that i was upset about being backstage was i couldn't watch the performance so I'm glad that you both got videos for me to like watch later on for the performance because I was really yeah. really bummed about it while I was backstage. <laughs> when you were up there on stage. <laughs> I know, I know. So I was like, man, I can only do I was stuff. like But I had so I, much fun. I had so much fun. I, I was so amazed they did the Tempera Kids. And you talk about random. I mean, it's like hardly anyone does any Tempera <laughs> Kids stuff. And I know Tempera Kids because I remember the schoolgirl thing and the thing is like, and then, you know, stuff like that. I like, I like the stuff that's more Japanese or the, cause they did a Garu fashion video. Right. Mm -hmm. And I would love to do Garu fashion, like with Sierra and you and whatever. I'm sure oh Emily, that'd be so much fun. I'm sure I'd Emily could put off. Is. Huh? That I'd be down if Lucas is. Yeah, yeah have you ever done honestly, Gary? I know that sounds weird for me, but yeah. I mean, especially after doing the Lolita thing, I want to do. Well, it. I, I mean, that's what I'm saying. A few uh, influencers that do Gyaru. Yeah, well, I mean, like Tempera that. Kids did that Gyaru videos, and I tell you what, that was like the only one I really like because I like the fashion. I don't care about the like the other stuff. The other stuff's too like juvenile or little. It's kind of mm -hmm. got more of a Latin feel to it. But the guy, when they did the guy, I'm like, why don't they do more of that? Because that was like so cool. Because like you don't see so many people doing that fashion. And it's like, and especially like, you know, that's one I would love to get, do like one shoot where we're, we're just doing that. Because that's the only one I really like of their stuff. But I was like, that's so random to do temper kids. Because nobody does temper kids. I was like, <laughs> He was like everybody's like doing all the other groups you know it was like you know a, a vocaloid or whatever you know all right anybody else want to touch anything about the con before we go into the movie real quick i'm just so glad i got to see their dance performance like that was just top notch <laughs> like it makes me just want to drive to alistair and have him just start teaching me how to dance now <laughs> I was like, Alistair, oh, fuck. Oh, Sierra, you can dance. You no, can dance. if I get Alistair teaching me, bitches watch, I mean, watch out. It's over for y'all. That would I be amazing. Fine. I'd love to form, like, a group. Well, I think... I, I've got, like, two left feet. I honestly do. Uh, I did <laughs> want to say that, like, I've been going to ASTL pretty consecutively, except for when I lived in Chicago, but... Okay pretty consecutively since 2012 yeah i think so I don't, I don't know how many years that is but i've been astl a lot but this was your first astl wasn't it sierra and i probably won't be going back <laughs> <laughs> that's a long drive <laughs> it's like the con was amazing the con it was amazing it was big it was huge getting there i have to cross four bridges that's underwater and I was stuck on one bridge and my car was just shaking back. I'm not doing it again. <laughs> I, know, I really just cannot. I was, well, I, was, I was so surprised, like I told Lucas, that you were like, I'm going to come. I was like, if the, you did come, that would have been fine. But you <laughs> responded that you were going to come and I was like, it was Lucas. I couldn't tell. Lucas. I was so excited. I was like, I, 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 I honestly, I messaged her. I was like, hey, 
are you gonna are you gonna be trying to do ACL? And she's like, I don't know, maybe. And then I was like, and then later she hit me up. She's like, I'm gonna go. And I'm like, yes, this is gonna be awesome. I'm so <laughs> glad that you went. It was so much fun. <laughs> and yeah. all of your cosplays are so cute. I can't believe like your Toru was literally perfect on Friday. And you said that was your like backup, right? Yeah, it was. <laughs> Cause like the only one that actually fit me fit me was the Miku one. Oh yeah. Everything else was a little too big, and I was just like, they don't notice. <laughs> well, it was good to see Ruby Rose again. Oh yeah, her corset. <laughs> I had to wrap it around. I had to wrap it around and velcro it more. It didn't and, not. And, and you could tell that you had progressed from there, from when I first met you. Yeah, because I didn't have contacts. Like, I ordered contacts yeah. the first time, and they were like, yeah. Well, yeah. more than that. And, and then it was yeah. like, I ordered foundation because I was just not getting into makeup. And it was like, yeah. it's not coming until next month. Yeah, I was just you, like, you, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not going with makeup. You're, you're, <laughs> in, in other words, it was really nice on Sunday, especially. I was like, Thank you're you. no longer a little girl anymore. <laughs> I'm still a little girl. No, not. <laughs> I will be my grandma's little girl. Like I Aww. tell people, I was like, I know Sierra's not 13 because I counted the rings on her fingers. <laughs> Turn around. You got you got little lines, see? Count the lines there. You don't see lines on your fingers? No. Huh? No, the other way around. I I had that. You said count them. Right here. Like right here. Don't you see the lines? I got three lines. Right, on each hand. I got one on the, the other hand. Right. It's a joke. I'm being facetious. Oh, I'm sitting here counting the lines on my hand. Right? Like, you can't do that. You're stupid. You gotta stop. <laughs> but it's like, it's like your mind's like blowing you. <laughs> okay. Every every time you get older, you get another line. You know that? All right. So, um... That's how you know the age. Wait, like really or not really? I'm just I'm just making it up as it come along. All right, so so we, we had good time at the con. Very positive emotions, but very positive things. Well, I see I counting. To the one. What's that? I'm going to Atlanta one. The one in Atlanta Dragon Con, which one? Oh, I want to go to an Atlanta Con too. I want to start branching out. Like once it's a little more safer and the vaccines start getting a little more regulated, I want to branch out and do some I'm of the back. like. I don't yeah, know what I want to. I want to go out west definitely because I've got so many friends out there, and like out Washington, I'd love to go Seattle's and yeah. San Diego. Uh, there's a few and... Washington cons. I yeah. Oh, yeah. Soccer. Washington's are really big. And um, all right. So we everybody had a good time, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad we did it. I'm glad. To, uh, uh, I was like, I wish I wanted to go by and check on you at your hotel, but I never did. Sierra, I was like, to. Uh, I was out. You were sleeping. <laughs> as soon as I got home, I was out. All right. So. Uh, and like I said, you know, with uh, Mortal Kombat coming out, you know, I thought we'd do something regarding that. And it's like, then everybody was like, we're going to go see Mortal Kombat. I'm like, yeah, we better not. We better just do the original one. That way we can talk about it and still, you know, because let's revisit what's going on, how this started. And I'll give a little introduction. About 1992. Now, there was like used to when I was a kid, you'd go to these arcades and you had like arcade games and all the kind of things like that. And I know they're kind of still big in Japan and whatever. Uh, one of the yeah, saddest, they are. <laughs> you know, one of the saddest things that in my life was watching my local arcade just close. That was just like sucked because like you know when i had time off from work i i had a place to go you know the last big video game that i was interested in at the arcade was dance dance revolution but oh, I love that game. yeah but before then you know nobody really went to arcade and then mortal kombat came back in 1992 and really just like saved the arcade industry and because of that everybody had to get the the game on PS2 and of course the other games on X what well, wasn't Xbox back in those days. 
But you had PlayStation, then you also had uh, Nintendo, not Nintendo. Nintendo had... Yeah, you did. You had like that little Nintendo little thingy majigger barber. Yeah, Sega. It was Sega. That's what it was. Sega and uh, PS2. Because Nintendo wasn't into like the violent games. I had it on the Sega Genesis. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Actually, for a very short amount of time when I was young. And then my mom was like, you're way too young to have this. And then traded in for some like Disney game. Yeah. I, so for a very short amount of time I had it. Right. And, and it became a popular video game. And with that popularity, three years later, they come out with this movie. Um, and like I said, I was younger, uh, during this time and I was like, I, I'm probably more cynical now than I was back in those days. I was like, oh, wow. They're, I, I, I think I was really one, I wanted to see it. I really did. It was like, and the only actors I knew from it was Christopher Lambert and of course, uh, face, uh, Bridget Wilson. Those are only two people I know that were going to be in it. And like Bridget Wilson, I she's like a model slash um what do you call it? Is beauty she the Sonya one? Huh? Beauty competition. She, yeah, she was Sonya Blade. She Sonya? Yeah. Oh, okay. She's probably the second most famous one that I knew. Because like I said, I knew Christopher Lambert because I watch all the Highlander movies because you know, like there can only be one, you know. And then of course like Bridget Wilson was like was the teacher in uh Madison, uh, Billy Madison with Adam Sandler. And of course, she was introduced in the movie. Um, what was the movie? The movie called uh, uh, Last Action Hero with uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. So she played the daughter of Arnold Schwarzenegger in the movie. So so that's where she came about. And the, she was the only one I knew about. And then, of course, she's going to play Sonya Blade. But she was replacing another person because I think somebody else. But she uh, she was the only one that I knew about. But it was like, I, you know, I remember the soundtrack. I remember the video game was really popular. So I was excited to see it. And I guess I saw it. And then I rented it and everything. And I completely forgotten about it because I didn't watch anything afterwards because you know, uh, I mean, I'll be honest, these movies are terrible. The TV series are terrible. The the whole thing is just, I mean, I don't, I love the video games. I'll be honest. I mean, I remember bringing friends over and playing the video games and having a good time. I've got so many fond memories of getting together. I mean, that was another thing too. The social thing about Mortal Kombat is like, you know, you'd call somebody, yeah, everybody would be like, oh, I got this finishing move and you got this finishing move and everybody would be like, you know, testing their finishing move on everybody. And then you have like the, uh, uh, tournament. Oh man. We, it was just fun, you know, but it's like you actually, back in those days, you actually had to get up and go over someone's house or apartment. Mine was a apartment. I had my bachelor pad. So it was like people. I had, I had a friend in college actually invite yeah. me over to play mortal Kombat at one point. Yeah. And unfortunately I was in Chicago at the time cause it sounded super fun, right. you know, but like, yeah. But yeah, it's a lot of good memories for the video game, but they made this movie, and like I said, I watched it a couple of times, and I've completely forgotten about it, how stupid it was, because it's literally kind of lame. And, and video, Anybody would go over this quite... First of all, I mean, they rip off the movie uh, with Bruce Lee, Enter the Dragon. It's pretty much Enter the Dragon, and with all these terrible CGI special effects, like... like I was so you what? <laughs> Go ahead, sir. I was so, when I was watching this, I was so mad. I was like, <laughs> you picked the worst movie. We could. It was even worse than Trolls. Well, you were like, not so I was. I wanted you to say, because I knew this was going to be terrible, but it was like, it was either this one or let's go watch the new one, which everybody's going to see today. And it's like, I can't do that to people. So it's like, let's just take one of the old ones. and And it was like, I knew it was going to be torture, but I was just sitting there waiting for my phone to come back with the response. I'm going to fight whoever picked this film <laughs> from you. I was like, I knew Lucas went and put this film. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was like, we really didn't have much of a choice. I mean, it's like you could watch another one of the series, which are really, really bad or, or the TV series, which is, really really bad i mean all i can say is bad i mean the effects were insane it looks like i pulled it up on ms paint and then like put the layer on top of the oh, film when, i was so cringy when i watched scorpion's little cartoon come out of his hand you know uh yeah oh my god moving on the hand 
Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, it's like poor Bridget Wilson. She's got this like stuck. I, all I can describe it is face. I wish I could say another terminology, but she looks like, yeah, it's like she's always stuck in mode all the time. Yeah. Like, do it again, here. <laughs> oh, I, I was totally looking at something else. I was looking at an armadillo. <laughs> <laughs> We made eye contact. I had to be the dominant one. <laughs> Wait, you where are where are you that you have armadillos? In the sea. Y'all got armadillos? Yeah, you don't have armadillos? I don't I don't you think want one? I don't think so, dude. Yeah, there's some parts you of um Tennessee that's one. pretty dry. Like you got scorpions in Tennessee, like in uh What? Yeah. And yeah. fire ants too. You have fire ants. They even get fire ants up there. No, we got deer. We got deer too. <laughs> deer heart. I can sip you, you an armadillo. <laughs> uh, but like I said, we have elephants in St. Louis. <laughs> you got elephants. We got, <laughs> you got the St. Louis Zoo. <laughs> Did you see that? I was there. They 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 were like. We've got the the uh, dinosaurs you can call in by appointment. Yeah, they had the dinosaur exhibit going on. I was like, what, dude? Are you really going to bring your kid to the zoo to see dinosaurs? And, like... Oh, but you have to call in for by appointment. I saw that, too, and I was like, okay. <laughs> Hope you're not busy, Lucas. We're going on a trip. Those are some busy dinosaurs. They have to schedule you in. Yeah, I was like, well, I'll try to fit you in. We got an opening with a T-Rex. <laughs> <laughs> T-Rex will eat me. I... You know, T-Rex are actually proven to be slow. Well, all right, let's stick back to the movie. Again. All right, so uh, anybody want to tell us? Anybody got an idea what the plot is of this movie? I I can kind of give a overview of the plot. I can't really start anywhere, but like basically, we I'm gonna put this down. We have these three fighters that are summoned to fight in this ancient tournament to be, to like, I don't remember why, but yeah. Well, the, I think three so of them were good, good and then uh, the other three were evil. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the, well, I mean like, okay, which is like, I can, I can know, I know this much. It's Johnny Cage, Luke Kane, and then Sonya Blade. And Sonya Blade, right. yeah. Those are the those are the three good ones, and then uh -huh. Goro and Joxer and uh, I don't know if I'm saying his name right. So like, I know like why each one was fight. I I only know like why two of them were fighting. I don't I didn't really catch why the third one was fighting. Uh -huh. I'm not really sure, but I, I, I know I know the one guy was because of his brother. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he and felt really like guilty about his brother. Yeah, that was Luke Cage. Or Luke Kane. I'm sorry, Luke Kane and then Johnny Cage. Luke Kane. And Sonya wanted to fight that dude with Kano, the one with the robotic face. She wanted to fight him. Yeah, because he and killed I, her I partner. He killed her partner. Yeah. And and I wonder if I don't know, I mean you'd have to go on Wikipedia and of course if you immortal combat nerds can tell us whether or not like these people uh you know, if that's origin stories the truth. Because I know like when they played made the video game there was like, uh, what do you call it, uh, backstories to each of them. And so yeah. I wonder if these are canon, like this is like uh, the backstories. Because, well, I mean, like if you, any other, I mean, like when you bought toys, all the toys had backstories to a lot of these toys. And then they made the cartoons and then they didn't stick to the backstories. Of the toys, and you're just like, why didn't you just stick to the backstory? All you had to do is turn the box around and read this backstory, and you can add it to the movie. Like, why don't you do that? You know, oh, we it does it's not Hollywood enough. Yeah, <laughs> then you get all get all mad because you're like, you really made that character really lame. You know, like Man at Arms from Heat Man had a mustache, but like when you uh, had the figure, he didn't have a mustache. And for some reason, they made him the father of Tila. And you're like, if you read the backstory on the toy, the toy's like, no, he's just man at arms, and he doesn't have he doesn't have like a, a gay mustache or anything. He has like really green skin, you know. Like, but it's like one. I mean, it's like one of those uh, 
uh, uh, Freddy goes to Hollywood mustaches, you know. That's the reason why it's so lame. It's like, why did you do that? Because you know, he looks like he, he's going to the club afterwards. You know, he's like, well, he man, you got your thing with that. I got, I got to go to the club. I'll see you later. <laughs> Relax. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, I wish people would stick to their stories. That's what I'm all I'm trying to say. And that's what they do is like the Mortal Kombat probably went all typed all this crap out and then they do these movies and they don't stick to these stories or whatever. But anyways, to, Yeah, that's pretty frustrating. It is frustrating. I'd be really mad, especially if I was someone who like played the game or like whatever part, you know, enjoyed one part of it and then I was like really looking forward to the movie coming out and they're like, Oh, you like this character? Get wrecked. I <laughs> you know, like what well, was you thought? Any of y'all were Street Fighter fans? No, I was. you were. I don't know. Don't ask me their names, but I used to. Me and my brother, um, when we were angry, we go, we get on Street Fight, <laughs> and then he kick my butt, and then I win one, and then he the next ten. Yeah, well, I mean, you didn't know the character. Like I said, a lot of kids were into Street Fighter more than they were in Mortal Kombat. It's kind of like, mm -hmm. yeah, it's kind of like with GoBots and Transformers. Like, I knew kids that grew up like in GoBots, and I was big in Transformers. And, and of course, the story that GoBots were the Kmart version of Transformers, basically. And they were. Because <laughs> it's like Transformers were like, an average Transformer probably cost $25, $30. An average GoBot cost like a dollar to $5. So, yes, they were the Kmart version of Transformers. <laughs> But you know, transforms those boxes, and they had the backstory again, backstory, you know, and all this kind of thing, you know. And then you, the cartoons, I think, try to keep that canon and everything like that, and it's a shame. But there's rules; you need to abide by the rules. But I don't know if it's the case with this film. It's like I said, a lot of the stuff they were stealing from, a, like Enter the Dragon, Bruce Lee's Enter the Dragon. It was kind of like, let's take Enter the Dragon's idea and add Mortal Kombat story there. And it was like, oh. Uh, it was like, basically, take this movie, sprinkle a little. It's like copying homework and not changing a few answers. Here. Yeah. That's what it basically was. Yeah, I, I compared it. Yeah, I almost compared it to Scooby-Doo. Like, and I hate, <laughs> Scooby-Doo is probably, like, there's a scene where they're all three listening in to Goro and what's his name? And it's so hilarious. It's like, really? You know, I hate that because it's like, they never notice that people are watching them. And why are they having this private conversation in this giant room, you know? <laughs> you know? <laughs> They didn't even look like they were in the same room with how exactly. it was being animated. Honestly, it looked like they shot it. Like I know the one guy wasn't even real, <laughs> they probably but like didn't it didn't even look like they were in the same room. You know, it looked like it was shot in two different rooms anyway. The, so. the, 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 probably was. the private, well, yeah, the privates, yeah, they, they probably did. They probably shot their reactions and the conversations separately, and it was like probably okay. No, just react. Yeah, I know. And they just it was edited crazy. In there. It was like, what? And you know what I really hated? Okay. You know, like, the worst part of this movie that I'm pretty sure they all anticipated to be the best part of this movie was all of the, like, Scorpion and Sub Zero one liners. Like, the, get over here. <laughs> and, like, everything is like, wow. <laughs> That's your only line. Yeah, well, the, that's uh, your only line, and it's like the way that he even said it. It didn't even sound like, didn't sound like in the video game. It didn't sound like it belonged there in the movie. It just sounded like, okay, now is my cue to say this. It's like, but, uh, what is going on? Well, the hint. It was, and they were like <laughs> henchmen, like Sub Zero, and uh, and I don't understand all that, and. But the thing that makes me so mad, I was watching the film, is how poor the editing was. Like, I, oh, even I could do better. Yeah, what? Well, well, Not saying. Yeah, well, I mean, it's like they <laughs> had two scenes that made sense, and then they like when the tournament starts, right? Okay, so they were like tournament scenes. They went one thing, and the next thing we see Johnny Cage in the woods. You're like, you might want to set that up. <laughs> <laughs> like maybe, maybe yeah it's like maybe johnny cage needs to say uh i'm going out the woods to use the bathroom real quick you know or something because you're watching well, I'm going to look at something else like something my guy don't just telepath yeah like teleport him yeah right? exactly it didn't make no sense or like there's one scene all of a sudden you see katana 
and uh, Luke Kane on a beach, and they're gonna fight. And it's so funny because it's like there, it's like you know. Yeah, I, I was watching that, and I was like, did I miss something? Or it's like, are they in the fighting? Is that what it was? I guess or it was. Supposed to be in the- it, and it was set up like more like a romantic thing. That's what was so funny about the whole thing. It was like that's what I was thinking too. I was like, what? It's like, are we watching the same movie? It's like, it's like, no, that's Mortal Did Kombat. I which- <laughs> <laughs> Mortal Kombat, nineteen ninety five. Poorly edited film by so and so and so. Um, I don't know what happened. To all these characters, like I said, the Johnny Cage guy. I don't know where he's at. The Luke King guy. He did a lot of Mortal Kombat films after this. Of course, like Bridget Wilson got married and left. Pretty much left Hollywood. And then like um, uh, Christopher Lambert. I've known him for several years. I wa- I was a big Highlander film, and I think well, that was the whole thing with him. Oh, a B star. Let's put Christopher Lambert in there. Of course, that other dude. He's in a lot of B movies. You can that the bad guy. You can look him up on the internet. He's in like tons. He's got a big IMB MB uh, list. Um, there was some things that it just at first when I started watching it was like every time a character came on screen, it was like oh, that one's going to talk. Who was the most annoying to you? Sonya. Sonya was pretty much annoying. Why was she? In- That's the only reason I remember her Johnny name. Johnny Cage. He was pretty dang annoying. I mean, like his one-liners made you just want to go. No, I, so the dude, the dude who wanted to fight—I can't remember names. I'm sorry, y'all. The dude that said he cha- he could challenge anybody, and he challenged Sonya, him when they killed the brother too. He was absolutely annoying <laughs> to me because he's the most clever fit in his mind, and I'm just like. <laughs> it, it was definitely a weird movie. I didn't know what was going on through half of it, even though well, I was actively watching the it. The thing like... that when I first started, when I first watched this when I was younger, and was uh, I remember the girl, the girl guy, you know, the one with four arms. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. I remember when he first came out. I just about died laughing in the movie theater because he looked like a cartoon. And I just yeah, he does. He didn't even look close to real. Yeah, and I'm sitting there go, oh my gosh, that is so lame looking. And he comes out there, and his voice. The funny thing was too is like that evil cartoon voice at the end, where the cartoon guy comes out, and I'm going to go after you guys too. And they're like getting a stance, and it's like, oh my goodness. I'm like, I'm expecting the like the Mortal Kombat animated series now, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was wild. The uh it was a trip. It was a trip. And like you could literally predict anything. Like when um <laughs> really when, like, flashed the, the stone, I was like, watch, watch, it's gonna it's gonna come alive. And then oh, two seconds later, a soul went in and he's alive and I'm like, I called it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or or the time that it's like, oh, don't worry, brother. And it's like, that's not your brother. And then he transforms and it's like, ah. Told you he wasn't his brother. We're all in like this spirit's cave and you're like, the brother's going to talk to him. Just watch. And I was like. Right, yeah, I know, right? Like he's actually going to, he's going to have to actually make an appearance now that you faked him out. You know, you can't just be like, nah. Yeah, it, it's so. We should, we should, we should write the next one, Sierra. Like <laughs> we, we know, you know. Well, I mean, you, you, we'll see if this new one is going to redeem all this. Are we going to do the new one? I don't know. We'll see. I mean, it's like. Yeah. I mean, I feel like since we did this one, like it'd be easy to compare. Well, I mean, that's the bad thing. Is is like. It's like comparing, I, I don't know. It's just like, I, I listen to the trailer and the people talking about the new movie and they're doing this voiceover. It kind of sound very annoying to me, but we'll see how it goes. Cause it's like, um, the trailer for this one, it made me feel like, oh my God, you know how it's like three fighters join together to do this tournament. And it's just like, all I could hear in my head was like, coming soon to O on VHS. Like, it's all I well, can think you know, of. I was like, because it's that style yeah. of, like, the old movie when they'd introduce, like, that way. Well, the, here's the bad thing. When Hollywood does any make of anything, like, uh, video games or whatever, they try to make a film because they're afraid that non-video game fans won't get it. And I'm sorry, no one goes to Mortal Kombat, the movie, if you've not played the video game. 
there's not like a non-video game person going, gee, I want to go see the Mortal Kombat movie. It's not like you're, you know, I'm not stereotyping, but it's not like your girlfriend's going to go, honey, the new Mortal Kombat's going, let's go see it. And then I'll come home and we'll make some drinks and whatever. No, that's not your Friday. The dudes that are dudes and chicks that are going to see Mortal Kombat, they're going to see Mortal Kombat because they play the flipping video game. And they never ca cater to those people during those days. They probably do now. But back in those days, they didn't think video game was real entertainment. And so you got this Hollywood guy going, well, we can make it like Enter the Dragon. And we could have a little Johnny Cage and Sonya Blade romance. And it's like, dude, you ever played Mortal Kombat? What's that? That's what we're making a movie about! <laughs> You know what I'm saying? It's like, um, it's like they were like, oh, I heard the show, I heard the game Mortal Kombat, never played it, but we're going to do our best. Well, that's, yeah, like, let's make a movie. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what they probably sound like now. The Holly executives sound more like Sierra. And I'm like, <laughs> I've never played it, but I think everybody would like it. <laughs> yeah, never played it, let's do our best. That's funny. And I'm not going to try to read the box of any uh, doll <laughs> research, but let's do it. Did you ever, like, encounter, like, I mean, like, if you go to the cons, let's be honest, there's a lot of Mortal Kombat fans there. I've never seen oh, one. Oh, yeah. One of my best friends at one of the cons that's always there in the St. Louis community is, like, always Sub-Zero. He yeah. always is Sub-Zero cosplay. Right. And and the question is, is like, now how do they feel about these films? I mean, do they like, well, is this canon to the... I don't know. I should ask him. Because... The... I mean, there's a... That's like asking what their favorite flower is. You don't ask them. Because <laughs> 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 then you, you're going to be there for hours. You're for... Yeah, be... true. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like that's similar to asking someone, like, if they like the anime or the manga adaptation for something. Because a lot of times, like, with Full Metal or stuff, it gets real derailed. Well... Right. They just... They go into it. Is there... I mean, I felt like when I was younger... But it's, I don't think it's a big issue. There were people, like I said, that were Street Fighter fans and that were Mortal Kombat fans. Because I, I believe Street Fighter came out first. And, yeah, really. and people were like, oh, you just ripped off Street Fighter. Well, the thing is with that Mortal Kombat, the reason why it was so innovative is because it used that laser technology like real people. So it looked like real people on the screen fighting. And where Street Fighter oh, looked like 16-bit characters. Sorry, but that's the truth. It looks so badass. Yeah, exactly. I mean, basically, you at Mortal Kombat, the characters look real. Like, you're looking at a real... Like, Sub-Zero was played by a real actor. They hired real actors to make that video game realistic. And it, like I said, it changed video games. Because, like, when I went to... We used to have, like... Uh, after the arcades were kind of dying down, we had like a Kroger's and they get like one video game, right? And so, which was something, so at least she had something to play while mama was in there buying food, whatever. So Rampage was one of the first ones and it was kind of like really, like what do you say, uh, high tech first time. But then of course Mortal Kombat came along and they started putting them in the super Walmart centers and whatever. People were like lined up to play it because it was like really cool looking. I mean it was very innovative for its time and so them making a movie, no surprise, you know. Of course because it's popular. I didn't have any like arcades around growing up which really sucks but like now that I'm an adult we do have a barcade in the city yeah. which like is me and the boys favorite place to go so we get to go and we get to experience all the old games we get to play the pac-man games the x-men fighting games they got like the pinballs racers ddr uh frogger yeah. it's really fun well it was so, it, it's I feel like I missed out when I was a kid not being able to go, you know, not having an arcade in the area, though. Well, I mean, didn't you have, like, Dance Dance Revolution, though, during your time? No. Really? Mm -mm. That's a shame. I never played it. I always watched it on YouTube. DDR? Really? Dance Dance Revolution? Yeah. Well, I ended up getting the game for home. 
And it was great because you could do your cardio and play the game. And it would keep up with how many minutes and all that and how many how much you lost your wow. weight. But I was big DDR. And I know it's like, I know y'all are trying to imagine, but I was. And so I would play when I was, you know, working overseas. I had a home version, right? And so I was like, I had it set up in my little hooch. And, of course, all the medics were making fun of me. He's in there playing Dance Dance Revolution. Well, because when I had shore leave, right, I would go to the arcades and play the tournaments, you know. And, you know, you had these skinny little 13-year-old boys come out there. I mean, had girls on each shoulder, and they'd just throw their jackets up. And, you know, you'd play the game, whatever have you. And a lot of the game, and the game, and that's the reason a lot of my music playlists is DDR stuff. Like, uh, that's so cool. When he's like, <laughs> dream a dream. Da, 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 and, and I remember doing dream a dream uh, and all those other things. But they would always kill me on the slow stuff. I hated the slow stuff. Like, the, all the girls would pick the slow stuff and they'd kill you on that. Because they, it's like, mm-hmm. they would pick something really slow and you're like, you want to go really fast, and they're like, and you're sitting there trying to think, you know, doing the steps and all that. But that was the last arcade game before our arcade closed that I cared about or anybody cared about. I mean, because it's like, and they ought to be thankful for all the DDR players because putting the coins in, I mean, because them arcade places wouldn't last it as long as they had. And, um, and then, like I said, the tournaments were a big deal. I mean, it's like a kid making. 500 bucks for winning a tournament hey that's a lot it is a lot but you know and that's the reason why when i got in the j-pop thing it was pretty easy to go into it because a lot of the the um ddr games had j-pop songs on them and then you had like mm-hmm. the korean uh versions and the korean versions which was kind of strange having j-pop on the korean version of the games but yeah the korean version uh, games had like real J-pop songs on it, and I like the Korean versions, um, DDRs, than I do the American versions. To be honest with you, um, they were fun, and you had the little cute cartoon characters coming up, you know, all that kind of stuff. But yeah, and it's like that was the last one after Mortal Kombat that I saw that people showed any interest, and then all these arcades places just closed down. Of course, we still got arcades at our movie theaters, and that's about it. Which uh, I don't go much in the movie theaters right now, but I'm, it looks like we're going to probably go back to it. I'm going to be seeing that Demon Slayer movie Monday. What's that Demon Slayer movie? What's it called? Demon Slayer? Demon Slayer. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to go, but you're going to go see the uh, Mortal Kombat, right? We were, but we actually changed our mind. We saw um, Remorse instead. Oh, I see how you are. All right, all right. So, uh, real quick, uh, any let's see, what do you say? Any recommendations on this? Don't watch this movie if you played the game. I guess. What's that? I don't. I said watch this movie if you played the game. I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I do not recommend this. I will say one thing. There's one scene I always remember. <laughs> is when Johnny Cage splits and hits the cartoon guy in the nuts. Yeah, that was crazy. That's about it. And then, of course, when Sonya Blade breaks the guy's neck. Those are only two things I really remember. That was bad. Yes. Yeah. Of course, I was like, I think every guy wanted to be that guy. <laughs> At that time. Bridget Wilson, whatever, we love you. And, uh, you know, regarding of your face that you cannot help that <laughs> sad i like i can't i can't remember his name but he is the one that was fighting for his brother he like, luke kane chef kiss. yeah well he's done a lot he of looks like my friend he looks like one of my facebook friends <laughs> i saw him i was like oh my god that looks so much like my friend it's all i could think of the entire movie i was like oh the hair it's him with the long luscious hair yeah, yeah. the hair I just love the hair. I don't know what it is. I just love the hair. <laughs> You're sick. <Yeah. laughs> but I love you. Well, guys, thanks for joining me this hour. Uh, we appreciate you guys doing. We'll divide this up into two videos, one on Khan and one on the Mortal Kombat. Talking Mortal Kombat. What? <laughs> Peace. Did y'all have any questions before we get out of here?
No. Nope. nope. I'm going to relax, <laughs> play some video games, and do some binge watching. So. I'm going to eat breakfast. Oh, you know, I didn't think about food. <laughs> yeah, huh? I actually... Guys, hold on. Hold on, okay. wait. Hold on, wait. Hold on, wait. Say hi! Hi! <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Yeah, I've been here literally the entire time. Yeah. <laughs> I saw a shadow moving on the light, and I was like, is was that a really big yeah. cat, or that's a person? Well, <laughs> I kind of figured. It's my cat. I kind of figured. I called it, but I didn't want to say anything. I was like, wait, I was like, <laughs> but I didn't want to give any spoilers alert. Yeah. Well, Sundays are his one of his only days mm. off, so usually I'll pick him up either before or after the reviews. Yeah, I've literally sat here and just watched for at least like three of these. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I just in spirit. wanted to show that I have this being here with me and. We love you guys. All right. Peace. Thanks, you guys. I'll get with you guys Bye. tomorrow. <laughs> Bye. Who's your daddy? Having issues distributing your music? Try DistroKid today. Get your music distributed through Spotify, through iTunes, Pandora, TikTok, through YouTube, through Twitch. All by clicking below. Click on the link below and try DistroKid to get your music distributed today. I've tried it and I've loved it.